Okay, let's talk about something known as bagging. So bagging decision trees. So we've talked about decision trees the past uh, couple of lectures, and the pros are that they're simple and that they're easy to interpret. But the cons, as we mentioned, are that they're not often competitive in terms of prediction accuracy. Uh, and so there's ways to actually make them more competitive by combining multiple trees to improve accuracy. These are known as ensemble methods, and bagging is one of these types of methods. So bagging is basically a general purpose procedure for reducing the variance of a statistical learning method. And so it works outside of just trees, but for this lecture, we're going to be talking about it specifically in the context of decision trees. And so it's particularly useful, and it's frequently used in the context of decision trees. Some people call this bootstrap uh, aggregation as well, so you might see it called something like that uh, elsewhere. So mathematically, why does this work? Uh, we're going to go back to intro to statistics, and so this should be a, a little bit of a refresher for you. But if you have n observations, independent observations, z1 to zn, and each has a variance of sigma squared, what would the variance of the mean be? Or the variance of, I can write this as z bar. So the variance of z bar is going to be sigma squared over n. This is uh, Sometimes this is also uh, called, um, if you take the square root, it'd be the standard error. And so in other words, averaging a set of observations reduces the variance. So if you have uh, you know, z ob or n observations, z1 to zn, each have a variance of sigma squared. If you take the average of those, it's going to reduce the variance. And it's going to do that because when you take the average, um, the, the, the variance of a mean is going to be equal to sigma squared over n. So this is generally not practical because we usually don't have multiple training sets. You could think of each of these z1 to zn's as, as different training data and then averaging across kind of the yeah, all of those to reduce the variance. But often we don't have multiple training sets. So we know that averaging a set of observations reduces the variance, and we know that this is often not practical because we usually don't have multiple training sets. So what can we do? We can bootstrap. So we can use some techniques that we've talked about already. We can basically take repeated samples from the single training data set. And so this is what happens in the bagging process. You generate B different bootstrapped training sets from the single training data set that you start with. And then you train your method on the B bootstrap training set to get this F hat uh, star. So basically to get these predictions at a point X. And then you can average all of the predictions to get this f hat bag, so basically this averaged bagged prediction, which is just going to be 1 over b. So b, as a reminder, is the number of uh, bootstrap training sets that we've generated. So it's just going to be 1 over b times the sum from b equals 1 to big B of these, uh, different, uh, of these different predictions. So we've just taken the average of these predictions. And why did we do that? Well, as we showed on the previous slide, when you take the average of a bunch of different um, of a bunch of different variables, we know that the variance is now going to be reduced, which is going to be preferable. So instead of just looking at a single one of these f hats, which would have a variance of something like sigma squared, we can look at this average across a whole bunch of f hats, and that'll give us sigma squared over n, or in this case b, because b is the number of training sets that we have. So this is bagging. Bagging basically takes your original training data, it resamples with it, so it, and at each time it's resampling, it's creating a new bootstrapped training set. So we do that B times, and then we fit our model, so we train our method on each of those bootstrap training sets, and we get the predicted values on each of those B uh, training sets, and then we average those predictions to end up with this bagged prediction. So. For regression trees, you generate B different bootstrap training sets. You fit a regression tree on the B bootstrap training set to get this uh, prediction at point X. And then you just average all the predictions. 
For classification trees, it's a little bit different. So for each test observation, you record the class predicted by the bee trees, and then you take the majority vote. So the overall prediction is gonna be the most commonly occurring class among the bee predictions. So instead of taking the average, you're gonna take the majority vote to figure out which one was the most likely across all of the predictions that you estimated. So you can actually estimate the uh, test error of a bagged model. Uh, it's known as out of bag error estimation. And the key to bagging is that trees are repeatedly fit to bootstrapped subsets of observations. So on average, each bagged tree makes use of about two thirds of the observations. Uh, you can prove this if you'd like, but it's not required for this course. And the remaining one third of observations not used to fit a given bagged tree are the out of bag observations or OOB. And so you can predict the response for the ith observation using each of the trees in which that observation was out of, was out of the bag, so was not included. So how many predictions do you think this will yield for the ith observation? It's gonna be B over three because as we talked about two thirds end up in the, in the bag, uh, in the, in the bag, so um, only one third will end up out. So you're gonna have B over three predictions for the ith observation and then we can average this. And so that is, this estimate is basically gonna be the leave one out cross uh, validation error for bagging as long as B is large. Okay, so we've gone through kind of the theoretical components of what bagging is, but what I want you to do is I want you to take pen to paper to actually go back through what I've described and draw a diagram to describe the bagging process to someone who's never heard this before. And so I want you to draw this diagram and then I want you to take a picture of it and you're gonna upload it uh, as today's content assessment just to make sure that you're sort of following along with what we're doing. And so what I want you to do is, again, draw a diagram to describe the bagging process to someone who's never heard of this before.